I just picked up the camera. How do you know all the time I'm coming out here to do a garden tour on here? Today I'm going to do a spin around my deck because I haven't done it for a while and I haven't done anything. Oh, look at this. She's following me. I haven't done really much of anything on here. There's so a couple things I want to talk about. Oh, there's an Oriole. That's a female sitting there. Oh, that's what I'll open this up with. It's so cool. The pizza's out. The pizza's out. You've probably seen the video, and if you haven't, I've showed how I make this. This is an ant moat. This is just a Frisbee, and the tray is sitting in the Frisbee. This has got water, and this has sugar water. Starting from morning, yes, kitty, starting from morning, the Orioles come in. You've got the hooded Oreos. The males are absolutely gorgeous. They're bright, bright, vivid yellow. You can't get any more yellow than that with the black bib. Then the females, they're very drab. They're just kind of a tan color, olivey, yellowy, tan, brown color. Then we also have the bullocks that come in that are different. They have a different facial feature. You'll see the black coloring on their face and they have orange to them as well. They are absolutely gorgeous. She's interested in this, right Kitty? I know. And then the hummingbirds, they feed out of that all day. So this has been wonderful. And the water feature in the morning is barely going. It's so cute. But all the birds from the neighborhood, I can't believe it's being used constantly by birds, this water feature. And then of course the hummingbirds feed off of that too. Okay, let's talk about Let's start with flowers and then I'll get into how you can make those upside down planters that you all love. Real quick, I've been buying flowers to put on the deck. I want to transplant them. This is an emu bush. And these are other types of flowers for the hummingbirds. And these are all safe. Most of these, as far as I know, are safe for dogs. So if they pick up the flowers and eat them, that's what you want to think about. If you're planting on a deck and you want to add flowers, kind of do a little research and see. Does it give them a stomach ache? Does it do worse things? At that point, you'll know if you really want it on the deck. So I'm staying with flowers that are safe, like lavender is safe. And then of course your pansies, your violas, all those are edible, so they're safe. So as you can see, everything is pretty much the same. I've been starting to pick the south thistle and I've tied it up here so the goldfinches can continue to feed off of it. I haven't torn this apart, but this is coming, and this will be completely taken apart, and I'm going to have a two system in there, this one on the end. And we will get into that as soon as I do it. I haven't finished my three tiers that I want to get into. These are three waste paper baskets attached in a certain fashion that is fantastic. You can use it in the house or outside. These are two. And where Kitty's standing in front there, that is a three set. And I promise I'll get to that very, very soon. And then of course there, I showed you last time, I put steaks in there and I've been growing green beans. Let me tell you, it's really good. You let the green beans get a little size, you bread them and you fry them. Oh my gosh, is that good. And that's it, as you can see, I haven't done anything. We've had rain, so I've been collecting water because remember, under the eaves, you may get a lot of rain, but these plants, over there do not get any water when it rains. It stays damp because the humidity in the air, but they don't get water. But I'm gonna have to get rid of this soon because you don't wanna let it sit here too long or I will end up with mosquito larva, which is fine because at that point, you just dump it into all the plants you possibly can. Everything is pretty much the same. I was gonna pull this out, but because the goldfinches are going nuts looking for south thistle and the hummingbirds have been collecting the fuzz off the south thistle, and they're, they've got nests everywhere around the house now. You've got the nest there they just finished. They've got one on the other side of the house. They're going to continue the nest for many months. My dill is doing fantastic. Can you imagine? I grew it all winter, and that's because it had a windshield on it. Just, to, you know, from water or milk, and you cut it top and bottom. I slipped it under and grew it inside, and the base of the plant thought it was warm. So it continued to grow and it was really good. That's a little celery back there. So the oregano and then back here is the stevia. It's, but this is coming off. This was shield because all winter we have the sun, this is south facing, was just blazing so heavy on the stevia that it, it will perish the stevia. Stevia, no matter what it says on the label, if you're in a warmer area, a warmer climate, stevia does not like full sun from morning till night. 
I have found if you give them a little bit of shade, they do better. And I've got stevia growing in the other garden, and you've seen it in the shade, and that's what it seems to prefer. Morning sun, maybe a little afternoon, and that's it. But this will be coming off real soon because it's now, as you can see here, see how it's shaded here? Another couple days, it's going to be moving over, and then I can just pull that off. So that's about it. Nothing new, but I want to show you this. See these upside down planters? So many of you have asked me. You love these planters. These planters, uh, when they first came out many years ago, were like $60 to $70 for nothing. They're only a few inches deep. They have holes on the bottom so you can plant your tomato plants hanging upside down, screaming, eh, no. You can plant your tomatoes upside down. I never used it for that. I tried it once. I didn't even like how the plant grew. I mean, they have their good points, but look at this. They wobble. They lean. They have plastic legs, and they lean. That is not a good thing. And sometimes they're leaning when you don't want them to lean, and we've had to turn them around and get them to lean up against the wall. Literally four and a half inches is not enough to do too much. That's why I've got this that's really packed in a flower pot that's growing in there. And even to see another flower pot there because you can't grow too much. You can grow dill, maybe walking onions, but you really can't grow a whole lot in there. It's just too shallow and it dries very quick. Layering does help. Let me show you a better way to do it that's a whole lot cheaper that if you've got the tables around, you'll grow them for nothing almost. Under $10, could be under five. Let me show you exactly what is going on and how you can set this up on a patio, a deck, or anywhere. That is what they call a TV table that you can get. They fold up, this is wood. You can buy this almost anywhere and they cost anywhere from 10 to $15. She always knows the camera's on. She was in the house again. They're like $10 to $15. They're quite sturdy, and those are solid wood. I actually pick them up at the thrift store sometimes for $4, $3.99, and then a lot of times they have them for half price. Now, let me show you this. This is made by Sterlite. This is about four and a half gallons. This is just under those five-gallon buckets that you all are growing in. This holds a lot of soil. Look how deep this is. You don't have to worry when you plant in there if you're going to end up drying out because it's so shallow. Right, Kitty? They don't have to worry. So the thing is, these are really nice. Do you know those are under $3 at Walmart? Check your stores. Target probably has them too. Those are just, what do they call them, dish pans? They actually don't say much about them here at all, but a lot of times they call them dish pans. Well, because see the, the picture? People wash their dishes in it. Now, of course, you're going to have to make holes in them, and you can do it with a drill or, as I do, with a soldering iron. Right, Kitty? Now you're not paying attention. And then that's it. Look at the setup you've got. Now, you could almost put two of them on there, but here's the thing, and you can do it if you put a board. I don't know if you'd want to put that much weight on there. That would be nine gallons. Now it might be heavy, but you could do it if you want to try. You could even put a flower pot. But look at this. You can come over, service your... But let's look at the one I set up over here. You can service it by standing up. You don't have to bend over. I've got a patio tomato in here. I've got some parsley growing. And I even put some pansies in there. And I have to remember that I had a piece of ginger that I had left, and I threw a tiny piece in there, so in case it comes up, I'll remember that it's in there. But look how neat and clean and pretty that is. You can set that up anywhere. It's going to cost you next to nothing. Less than $10, less than $5. I've even picked some of these up before the people have tossed away. They didn't want them because the table didn't look good. That other one over here, I painted it brown. See, you can paint them so easy. Go get some tester paint. Go over to your Home Depot or Lowe's. They, they have them a lot of times for 50 cents, just colors people didn't want. Most of them are like a brown or gray, and that's perfect. You can paint it. It's an indoor-outdoor paint. They work perfect. And you, you could do it any way you want or leave it the way it is. I'm going to leave that one just the way it is. But see how nice that is? So you can get this for $3.00. That cost me $4. So for under $10, and like I said, you can get those tables for even cheaper. Under $10, you have a really nice little thing to plant a garden. You can plant a zucchini in here. 
four and a half gallons, that's plenty. A zucchini, a tomato, I would do one tomato, like I'm doing here, and then some parsley and some flowers. You can put walking onions in there. I wouldn't put a tomato and a zucchini in there, but you could do cucumbers, you could do wa a watermelon, the small ones. You could do a lot in there, and you could have them all lined up. So if you didn't want to bend, that's the way you can set it up. And then here I have the water. It drips out here and it goes into that right now. So you can actually direct the water to go into another pot on the ground. But I don't want to leave a pot on the ground because on decks, the wood, it will rot. So you'd have to make sure you move it off and on. But those were just too overpriced. I've actually seen them periodically online for $100 to $150 because people have them. They came in a box. You fill the base with water. Got to make sure that the water cap is on or you will end up with mosquitoes. There's a cap underneath that pot there. You could fill in with sand if you want to, but the whole idea was how are you going to move it when it's that heavy. You could tip the water out and then move it, which we've done. But they're, they're kind of skimpy and they do lean. From the heat, they kind of lean over and I've had to turn them and... When I got them, I got them for $5 at Walmart. No, $2.50. They had them marked down to 5 Nobody wanted them. And my daughter called me. And I ran down there. They were $2.50. And I got them for $2.50. And my daughter got some and my friend got some. And I ended up with both of theirs because they didn't like them. They're really difficult to grow in. So think about it. When you want to set something up, maybe you only want to set up a few. That's a really, really good deal. And then if you're in an area where you're not going to be gardening in the winter, you fold those things up and then just put them away in your closet, your garage, wherever you want to put them, off to the side on your patio or deck if you're not going to grow in them in the winter. And then come spring, you bring them out. And the nice thing about this, you can start your plants directly in these in the house and then you can just carry them outside as soon as you know the weather's good. And you know what? If the weather's not good, you can grab that. It's very light. And you can carry this inside and bring it in the house and if you're having a freezing night and then put it out the next day. So I happen to think these are much better. And I'm going to keep my eyes out when I see any of these tables because I wouldn't mind to have quite a few along here because I think they look really cool. And so I think with that we've gone everything. Everything is the same. You know, we've gone over it all. I don't have much broccoli here, but I've got broccoli. Oh, here's a little piece. Kitty, I found some broccoli. So I've you know, I will keep in touch with you all to let you know how this goes. But the beans have been great. I let some go so I can plant the seeds. And of course, Kitty wants her broccoli. She loves her broccoli. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. It will change, but I've been working out in the garden and getting other things done and slowly getting things done here, like some tomatoes growing, bringing in flowers. And I just got this set up. I haven't grown a patio tomato. I usually grow big tomatoes. I don't know if it'll be too small for me or what, but I figured I'd try it and we'll see how it goes. Have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.